Hello everybody, my name is Jay. I'm one of the expert teachers here at E2 Language. The first thing we're going to do before we begin looking at the PT science of speaking is some repeat sentence practice. Ready? I want you to repeat after me in three, two, one. I had an egg for breakfast. Number two, in three, two, one. I had to give up my social life. Number three, in three, two, one. I used to believe in ghosts. All right, how did you go with those repeat sentences? Something strange is happening to the language here, to the sentences. And we're gonna take a look at this in more detail. But first of all, this is what I said, but I didn't say it like this. So for number one, I had an egg for breakfast. And number two, I had to give up my social life. And number three, I used to believe in ghosts. In fact, sounded like this. I had an egg for breakfast. I had an egg for breakfast. Had an egg for breakfast. Number two, I had to give up my social life. I had to give up my social life. Number three, I used to believe in ghosts. I used to believe in ghosts. Interesting. Welcome to the science of PT speaking. This one is on connected speech. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Just before we do that, I just wanna quickly recap what we've looked at in the previous week's lessons because you need to put all of this science together if you wanna get a high score in PT speaking. So in week one, we looked at word stress. What syllable do we place emphasis on in the word to make it sound correct? Dog, robot, fantastic, helicopter, personality, in week two, we looked at sentence stress. So if you put emphasis on a particular word in a sentence, it changes the meaning. So for D, John will drive to the cinema tonight, not the supermarket. In week three, we looked at chunking and pausing. Where to pause and what words to put together into phrases. Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood. If you missed any of those, you can watch those on YouTube or in the platform at e2language.com. Right, let's look at this crazy connected speech. What is going on when native English speakers speak naturally? So, first of all, what we do is we link particular words together. For example, we don't say an egg, we say a neg. I had a neg for breakfast, a neg. Also, sometimes we add extra sounds that just aren't there. If I say true or false, true or false, true or there's a W that appears. Sometimes we just delete sounds off words like used to. We don't say that, we say used to because it turns out when you put a d and a t together, one of them disappears. Also, sometimes we just create new sounds. For example, if I ask you, don't you? I say, don't you, don't ch, ch, don't chew. So I've created a new sound there altogether. And sometimes if we have the same sound together, like social life, we delete one of the sounds or we combine the same sounds like social life, social life. This is connected speech. So I'm going to take you through this and we're specifically going to look at how to link words together to sound natural to get a higher score in PT speaking. All right, take a look at this paragraph here. Now I'm going to read it unnaturally. Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variations in pronunciation, that is accent. All right, this sounds incredibly unnatural and you can't do that in the PT and you can't do that in real life when you're uh, using English. It sounds like I'm a robot, okay? 
So what I need to do is I need to link specific words together, okay? Like an egg, a neg. Let's have a look at what happens here if I link these words correctly. This is actually how I say these words in these sentences. I say, does it, does it, does it? Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long, with an accent, as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variation in pronunciation, that is accent. However, there's no point in speaking with an accent if people can't understand you, is there? All right, crazy, crazy stuff. Let me read this again as I would naturally, and I want you to, it's very quick, we're talking about minuscule moments here, but just pay attention to how this sounds when, I, when it's read naturally at a moderate tempo. Okay, three, two, one. Does it really matter whether people speak with an accent as long as they can be easily understood? Many people now believe that in an increasingly globalized world, we should accept variations in pronunciation, that is, accent. However, there's no point in speaking with an accent if people can't understand you, is there? That would get you a high score in PT speaking because I have combined particular sounds with other particular sounds to form natural connected speech. Let's look at how this happens. What is the rule here? The rule is this. If a word ends in a consonant, that is a sound like, consonants are sounds that you make where you stop the airflow, like b or k, d, for example. Any of those sounds where your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your throat is stopping the airway coming through. A vowel is any sound where you, you don't actually stop the sound like a, ah, e, eh, e, o, oh, u. These don't have, uh, they don't stop the sound. So, if a word ends in a consonant like b, k, d, and the following word starts with a vowel, a, e, i, o, a, the consonant joins the vowel. Let me explain what this means because it's very confusing. Look at these two words here. Does it or does it? Here I have a consonant and here I have a vowel. Therefore, the s moves to it and I say does it, does it. Let's look at another one, an accent, we don't say that. We say an accent, an accent, because this is a consonant and this is a vowel, and therefore that consonant moves in front of the vowel. You certainly don't wanna be doing this on test day, thinking, oh, that's a consonant, that's a vowel, I might connect those two, no, no, no. no. This is the sort of stuff you need to do in your preparation time, to just become, first of all, become conscious that this happens when native speakers speak naturally. And second of all, you need to start to practice it and start to pay attention to how native speakers would read a paragraph, for example, and how they connect their speech like this. All right, let's do some practice. I want you to try. I'm going to give you 30 seconds preparation and then 30 seconds to read this with connected speech. Here's your preparation time. Okay, I want you to read it one more time as clearly as you possibly can at a moderate tempo, but connect those correct those words that need to be connected. Here you go in three, two, one.
Okay, nice work there, nice work. Cool, all right. Now we're going to finish by doing some crazily, mm, not difficult. We're gonna do some repeat sentence and the sentences that I'm going to say will be really connected up, okay? You may not understand them, but let's just see if you can repeat these sentences, if you can understand the words that I'm saying. Here we go, number one. Can I have a bit of omelette? Number two, can you turn off that tap? Number three, what are you up to this evening? All right, let's have a look at these sentences here. So, number one, can I have a bit of omelette? Can I have a bit of omelette? Do you understand what that says? Number two, can you turn off that tap? Can you turn off that tap? Number three, what are you up to this evening? All right, here are the answers here. So first one was, can I have a bit of omelette? Can I have a bit of omelette? Number two, can you turn off that tap? Number three, what are you up to this evening? So here we can see the crazy differences between written English, what you read and what you hear, because what you hear is far different than what you read, okay? You need to keep that in mind. Cool, guys, if you're not yet a subscriber to this YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button because each week we will release really good videos on the science behind PT and how you approach this test. Uh, do you know what, let me just start again there. You know what the hack is to passing the PTE? If you really wanna pass the PTE, the hack is you need to learn better English. It's hard to learn English properly. It's good when you have somebody or a company that can teach you this stuff scientifically, okay? So click that subscribe button, that'd be really good. And if you're not yet a member of e2language.com, that's where actually everything happens. So go and check out www.e2language.com. You can sign up for free. It's 100% online PTE test preparation, including live group classes, one-on-one -on -one tutorials, feedback on your speaking and writing, heaps of practice questions, methods, overviews, and lots, lots more. Cool. I hope you found that interesting. I can't stop thinking about this stuff now, damn. Thanks guys, my name is Jay, I will see you soon.